morning, afternoon, evening, depending on when you're watching this. I never really know what to say at the start of these videos. I've stumbled into saying, hey guys, something I would never ever say in real life. I've never said in my life other than on these videos. So I don't really know where that's coming from, to be quite honest. And I don't really know uh, what to say at the start of these videos at all. But anyway, <clears throat> this video is a little bit different to the ones I've made in the past in that uh, I want to talk to you about a, well, it's a book review really. Um, I enjoy reading photography books and I'm committed this year to trying to read a few more than I have done in the past. But it takes me a long time to go through a photography book. There's two real reasons for that. One, I'm dyslexic. But... Uh, I don't really have any problems with reading either. Which I know sounds silly, but basically I've got, I've got, I'm dyslexic, but it's under control. But it does tend to mean that I read a little bit slower, most people. Um, and I tend to linger over things a little bit more um, to ensure that I fully comprehend them. So it takes me a while to get through a book. Also, I have to read every little detail of a book. So, for example, at the moment I'm reading a book which is a collection of images, like 250 images everybody should see, I think it's called, or something along those lines. I'll review it when I've finished it. I will read every footnote, every single line in the book, rather than skimming through it. And the same is said of this book here, which is The Photographer's Guide to Posing, Techniques to Flat Everyone by Lindsay Adler. If you've never heard of Lindsay Adler, um, look her up on YouTube. She does have a channel. She is a fashion and beauty photographer primarily. And that's, this means, of course, that she generally photographs people. So she's put together this book, which is a very good book, really, um, about posing. Posing models, how to instruct people into the most flattering position for them, um, depending on body type. Now, it's not the easiest book for me to read, to be honest, because it's quite lengthy and it's quite dry. It's, I would go so far as to say it's a manual, um, a textbook, rather than a book that's designed to enthrall you. Um, but it's a really useful book, I would say. Um, just to give you a summary of sort of the chapters, um, it's basic posing and how the camera sees you, which is all about perspective and foreshortening and things like that. Um, how to pose and direct somebody's face, um, the general pitfalls of posing, um, and then we go into in different scenarios like posing women, posing men, posing couples, people with curves, basically larger people, um, family portraits, boudoir, maternity, and then a summary. And it's put together in, in a uniform structure that goes throughout, which will give you some feedback on some good images, some bad images, help you identify what's wrong and what can be improved on a step-by-step -step basis. And at the end of each chapter, there are a few basic poses to um, what she refers to as go-to poses. So for any scenario like posing a woman for a portrait, posing a couple, five quick poses that you can start off with, make a few variations and you can quickly generate a series of images, um, which is pretty well done to be honest. And I think this book, not many books end up in the studio. Um, because I read at home really. But this is such a manual type book that I think it'll be quite useful in the studio. If you're like me, you probably occasionally have imposter syndrome. And if you're shooting a scenario that you haven't shot for quite a while, then you'll suddenly have a panic and be on Pinterest and looking for inspiration and making sure you've got half a dozen poses locked down in your head um, so that you can direct the client and keep things moving along nicely, give them the confidence that you know what you're doing and generate a, a variety of images that hopefully they're going to choose some that they're happy with at the end and uh, be willing to pay for. So, yeah, I think that bit in the back of the book, now that I've read the whole thing from cover to cover, and to be honest, there's nothing massively revolutionary in there. It's really basics, and basics well explained and well enforced. Uh, but I think I'll keep it in the studio because I think those five go-to poses um, for any section would be very useful just to have a quick look at before you've got a client coming in. Um, if you need a little bit of inspiration or if things are running a little bit dry. You can also, if you're really struggling with somebody, um, to get them to pose properly, which can be, um, which happens occasionally, then you can get the book out and you can show them some options. I actually think this would be a really good book for aspiring models to read as much as photographers. And that just gives them an idea about how the camera sees them and how to uh, position their bodies and things. 
Um, so yeah, I would definitely say I didn't really want to give a book a score because I don't think books are like that. Um, but yeah, I think anybody who photographs people could read this book. Now, anybody who knows my photography knows that it's not. I'm not massively geared towards serious formal posing. Um, my photography is all about energy and emotion and generating that from the subject and limiting distractions as much as possible. But even I found the formal posing in here are really useful, things to look for. And where I found it particularly useful, quite surprisingly, and it's not even mentioned in the book, is after the shoot. And I'm running through the images to decide which ones I'm gonna edit for the client. Um, it helps you to quite quickly identify common problems and um, dump those pictures straight out. Um, there's nothing worse than thinking, in my photography, for example, being really happy with the expression that somebody's given, and then you edit the photo, you spend quite a while on it, and then suddenly you think, it still doesn't look right. And it's because an arm's been pushed forward, making the hand look massive, or something along those lines. And I think the fundamentals in here are really helpful in helping you to evaluate an image after it's been taken. Um, obviously, you really wanna get it right before you take it, but uh, yeah, I'd recommend this book to anybody um, who is interested in taking photographs of people. Um, you, it took me the best part of nine, ten months, maybe even a bit longer to get through it all. Because it's a heavy book, um, 431 pages. Um, text is quite big and there are a lot of illustrations, which is the book's real strength. Um, and there's some projects in the back as well, I think, to uh, work yourself through. But anyway, re good book. Thoroughly recommend it. Um, when I read my next book, The 250 Photos, when I finish that, which might be Christmas, um, I'll possibly do a review of that. And I've got this book for Christmas as well, which I'm really looking forward to reading. But uh, it's The Dramatic Portrait, The Art of Craft and Light and Shadow by Chris Knight. Sold on Amazon quite a long time ago. I've fancied reading it for a while. Um, but my mentality is that I can't start reading that book until I finish the other one. I can't hop in and out of books. Um, I have to read them one at a time. Anyway, speak to you soon.